Hello, dog lover. My name is Sara. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Welcome to another live dog training session on my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sara. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. And in this channel, I focus on educating you to become an educated dog lover rather than just a simple dog lover. And I do that by teaching you and showing you how to train your dog without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, like shock collars, prong collars, choke chain collars, force, domination, or being alpha. Instead, we use a simple method of play and praise reward system, which is a very simple and healthy way of training dogs. I go all, all um, details and I talk about all the details that you need to know why you need to use play and praise reward system in the channel. Uh, so if you're new here, take a look at the videos on my channel. Try to watch as many as you can to learn and educate yourself about dogs, training dogs, uh, how to train dogs with um, using play and praise reward system and without the use of food or treats and also learn why I don't suggest using food or uh, treats to train dogs. Not only it's not healthy to use treats or food to train dogs, it's also not natural. Also, it makes you to become uh, dependent on using food or treats instead of really and realistically connect with your dog. So those are the reasons why I don't suggest using treats and food to train your dogs. And if it's your first time here and, and you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the, click the subscribe button on the, on the video. And also make sure that you hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live next time. Uh, speaking of next video on Sunday, I will be posting an interesting video. It's not about particularly about beagles, but in general dogs, um, it's, a, it's about uh, sleeping. Why do dogs sleep so much and what what is wrong or what are the benefits of dogs sleeping? So keep an eye on that video would be uh, posted on Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you have any questions, dog-related questions, feel free to ask them in the chat area. I'll answer all of your questions today as they come in. And let's get started. Um, let me see if everything is going well. It seems to be going well. And we have best in town, says hi, Saro. Thank you for being here, here, best in town. And best in town is asking, can I buy a beagle from a pet shop? If yes, then will there be any health issues or not because, or not because there aren't any beagle breeders in my place? Hmm. You see, I, I'm actually going to do a video about this topic in the coming next in the upcoming week not this week but next week uh, this is a topic i think i have to talk about a little bit more but since you asked this question first of all i, I want to remind you that you can watch the complete video uh, that will be posted on uh, the 19th uh, uh, no sorry the 21st of june uh, at uh, 9 a.m pacific sta standard time watch that video i will explain a little bit more in details but the problem with getting any dog including beagles from a pet shop is that first of all most i mean most to all of the pet shops they buy their dogs and puppies from puppy meals and I'm not sure if you know what puppy meals are. Puppy meals are uh, places that certain breeders, they take advantage of the uh, market and they breed dogs in, in an environment and in a situation that is not healthy, is not clean, is not uh, appropriate. They breed them just to you know, have 
numbers and then they sell them to the pet stores pet stores they tend to buy these puppy meals some knowingly and some unknowingly they buy these puppies from puppy meals and supporting them and when you go and buy a, a puppy from a pet store you're indirectly supporting puppy meals so what that means is even though you're in your mind you're buying a puppy and in, in, you may think that you're saving a puppy but on the other side you're supporting this industry of puppy meals which is not appropriate they're not appropriate breeders they're not appropriate um dog uh, lovers they're not dog lovers they're just doing it for money and if you support them then they will keep doing it until um you know time ends you know you never know so i don't suggest buying from a pet shop but in your case you're saying um there's no other beagle breeders in your area i'm sure there would be if you do a little bit of research maybe check your rescue organizations nearby check your local shelters i rescued a puppy beagle puppy and you know i got it from a local rescue organization i waited i waited a few years actually until i got the puppy that i wanted um so if you do your research and if you uh, wait maybe the, it will come uh, tr try to focus on your focus your energy on uh, getting a beagle puppy from rescue organization if you put your positive thoughts in that i'm sure the uh, the the universe is going to help you and is going to get you a puppy that you want uh, and the last thing that I want to talk about is the, in your question, it, would there be any health issues if you get a pet shop, a beagle puppy from a pet shop? It would be, there would be. You see, there is two reasons. I want to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, whether you get it from a breeder, proper breeder, or a pet shop store, they would, you would have health issues. The reason one is because we are overbreeding dogs and most dogs have uh, health issues already developed in them. Most, most puppies are already born with health issues. On the other side, uh, imagine that plus a, a puppy being born in a, in a puppy meal in a bad environment and raised in a bad environment, they will have uh, health issues. So. I guarantee you that you will have, if you get the puppy from um, a pet store, you would have a puppy with, which would have a, some kind of health issues. Either it's going to develop now or in the near future. So those are the things that you want to consider. Now, again, watch my video in a couple of weeks and um, think about it. And also try to put your energy in um, in the universe to get a, a beagle puppy from a rescue shelter or organization. That would be my suggestion. And there's a follow-up question as well from Best in Town. What dog breed is better, a golden retriever or beagle? Golden retriever or beagle? Golden retriever or beagle? Hmm. To be honest with you, these two are my favorite breeds, beagles and golden retrievers, just because of their personality and their demeanors and their obviously their look as well and their energy and their uh, the way they are with in general with every dog and animal and other people and everything else. They're very gentle, very kind, very playful. Uh, breeds. Uh, obviously, there's the difference is their size. You know, beagles are smaller than golden retrievers. Golden retrievers tend to have um, hip problems. They automatically will come with some hip problems. Beagles, on the other hand, um, 
there isn't any particular uh, issue with them health wise as far as i know uh, one is easier than tra to train than the other beagles are harder to train than golden retrievers so those are the things that you have to consider it's it's like um it's it's almost like comparing apples to orange <laughs> in a way but uh, they are favorite they're my favorite uh, breed if i could um if i had the opportunity i would have both um but for the lifestyle that i have at the moment i i currently just stick with beagles myself and uh, the other thing about goldens is that they have longer fur and they shed a lot and also just beagles shed too but Beagle's hair is short, fur is short, uh, goldens are longer and you can see it and it's just, they shed all the time. So those were, those would be my thoughts on comparing uh, goldens with beagles. So it's up to you which one you can, uh, again, you know, size wise, you know, it's, uh, they take more space, golden retrievers. Um, and such thing, you know, if you have big place or small place, you have to consider all those. Yeah. Great question. Uh, we have Divya Sharma. Hello, I have a new beagle puppy, puppy and is waiting on his third shot. He's socializing fine. Also, he's on a big chewing itch. So how do I navigate him to chew on right toys instead of our shoes and socks? Okay. <laughs> uh, so your first part of your question uh, you know, he is waiting on his third shot. It's it's okay to go ahead and start socializing. Uh, as long as the puppy had his own second shot, it should should be fine. Believe it or not, puppies are born already with uh, immunity to everything the, from the mother. Mother already is giving them the immunity to all the pathogens already. So, you don't have to worry much, but because puppies are born in, in different environments in these days, you know, they are born in urban environment, which there are different types of bacteria and pathogens in, uh, believe it or not, in the city than in, in, a, in, a, in a rural area. So what you want to do is, yes, give them the shots, but also uh, be careful a little bit. Um, don't expose your puppy to environments that are extreme. Uh, the other thing I would do is whenever you bring your puppy home or after a walk or something, just wipe their paws with wet towel um, just to get rid of whatever it is on their paws and then so they don't they won't be licking it and, and then getting it. Uh, so just be careful, but as long as they have had their second shot, it's good to go to socialize. The third one is usually rabies, uh, which if you are uh, socializing with your puppy with safe, good puppies or adult dogs, and there's no confrontation and nobody's going to bite anybody in a form that is going to uh, draw blood, then it should be safe regarding the rabies. Um, the only thing is if your puppy is um, is biting other dogs and you, it may have the rabies and it's going to transfer to other dogs. But if other dogs have had the shot of rabies and they bite your puppy, your puppy uh, should be okay. So those are the things that you want to can be concerned about and be wor not worry much about them. Uh, the, but the chewing, uh, since we are talking about socializa socialization, if you allow your puppy to socialize with other puppies and dogs, that would re reveal relieve some of the chewing uh, habit, bad habit. This is why I always suggest to allow your puppy to play and socialize with other dogs and puppies so they can practice the chewing and biting on each other and have the opportunity to relieve themselves from the, the, the sensation that they're getting on their gums. Plus, you know, it's a, it's a, 
uh, bite inhibition, it's, a, it's something that they are uh, uh, um, designed to do. They're, they need to practice biting on other puppies and other dogs. And if you don't provide that opportunity for your puppy, it's going to direct that energy to you and your shoes and socks and stuff. Uh, definitely chew toys are a good idea. Uh, bones, raw bones are a good idea. And playing with puppies and other dogs are also a good idea. The better solution is providing mental and physical simulation for your puppy, which is basically allowing your puppy to play with other dogs and uh, puppies. Hope that helps. Great question. Apex Gaming is saying hi is in the house and he's is the person that likes my videos. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. support. And I really uh, uh, appreciate your, uh, uh, your passion and determination. And uh, that's very kind of you. And I really uh, enjoy that and appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Uh, Anya is asking, hi, Sarah, thanks for all the advice, but my beagle won't stop howling. <clears throat> um, Howling. The howling is due to um, um, boredom. Basically, if a beagle is bored, it will uh, howl. Um, I don't know if you know, beagles have three kinds of barking. They have the barking, regular barking, uh, howling, and baying, right? and they bay too. So they are bred to bark. So the howling is part of the, the tradition for beagles to be vocal. Uh, and they use it for communication and also to, uh, to also tell you or tell others how they feel. So when a beagle is howling out of control and, uh, and all the time, then it's a sign that your beagle needs more mental and physical stimulation. So um, what I want you to focus on, uh, let me bring it down. Uh, just give me a second. I'll get the, uh, um, okay. okay. So what you want to do is focus on providing your beagle with uh, it's daily five essential needs, okay? So wh what you want to do is, let me bring this up. Okay, there we go. Focus on providing your dog's daily five essential needs. So what that means is you have to provide five things for your beagle in order your, for your beagle to be mentally and physically stimulated, happy, healthy, and well-behaved. So in order to achieve that, you have to provide exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection, okay? Affection comes at the end. Uh, so exercise is providing proper amount of exercise, so not too much, not too little. So you want to provide enough exercise for your beagle, enough training, um, and enough socialization. These three basically are mental, mental and physical stimulations for your dog. Uh, so exercise, uh, exercise is mostly physical. Training is mental. Socialization is both mental and physical. Uh, these have to be provided on a daily basis. And then you can follow up with care and affection. So provide these five things where your beagle, because your beagle is telling you that this is what's happening. I'm not getting enough exercise. I'm not getting enough training. I'm not getting enough socialization. I'm getting a lot of care and, and affection. That's why it's howling. Most people focus on, most dog owners, they focus on care and affection. This is most dog lovers focus, care and affection. Care, a lot of good care. They provide good food, you know, good amount of food. Not good quality food, but good amount of food. It's important to provide good quality food, fresh food, uh, species appropriate food for your diet, diet for your beagle. 
pro pro provide good amount of care and most dog owners they do a lot of affection they share a lot of affection okay so what happens when you share a lot of affection and care only and you forget about providing exercise training and socialization your dog starts telling you how it feels it tells you that i'm not getting enough of the other three stuff i'm getting a lot of these other two last things that i need but i need to get enough exercise and training so your beagle is basically telling you hello i need more exercise training socialization or it could be telling you i have a lot of exercise it's too much i'm, I'm too tired too exhausted i need to have less exercise a lot maybe some training and then uh, socialization as well so focus on those and if you need more uh, information about those five essential needs uh, I've written a book you can see over here a dog's five essential needs um, I have it on my website as well I have videos on my channel um, just Google uh, just go on my channel and search for dogs needs and you get uh, some videos and watch those summer uh, summer summer hi sorrow hi summer nice to have you here i uh, i'll be watching getting my doodle next friday you're getting a doodle so i i wonder if it's a golden doodle or labradoodle doodles are great dogs too um they're they're very playful very trainable and very fun dogs as well it's great to get a, a golden doodle or labradoodle um, very popular nowadays and i'm glad that you're getting a dog soon kp is asking hi sir how do i teach an abused dog how to play or understand what a toy is glad to have you here and i think you're the one who asked me or commented um, a while ago maybe a week ago or so and i asked you to come and join me on live session this week so i can i can explain and talk about this and this is one of the topics that actually i wanted to start today's uh, live session uh, but there are lots of questions coming in and i want to answer them all but i will i want to talk about this and i think um i think it's important to learn and understand what to do uh, so you have an abused dog and doesn't know how to play and then understand what the toy is and there's a follow-up as well let me see i saw it I think, yes my dog is three or four years old and is a mix of crete hound and anatolian shepherd dog he has spent three years in rescue kennel after living on the streets in greece yeah that's the one that's the one i was looking for this i can't remember i couldn't remember where it was so i wanted to talk about this okay i'm glad you joined the live session thank you for being here kp um so when we talk about you know dogs who have been having some form of uh let's say abuse right um and they had different life and they're already three or four years old what happens is when we are rescuing a dog what happens we start thinking about all those stuff uh, been has been abused doesn't know how to play uh, it's been uh, having a hard life until now so what happens is we start feeling sorry for this dog and this dog feels that energy from us which we start feeling sorry for the dog and when you start feeling sorry for a dog your energy level goes from this to here when you feel sorry for anything your energy goes from there to here what i mean by the energy energy that you need to provide for your dog the energy that you need to have to support and help your dog goes from this to this you almost become at the same energy level and same state of mind as your dog and unfortunately this is very common we start feeling sorry 
for the story of the dog. And when we feel sorry, we become, uh, we are not able to help the dog. We become weak, we become, um, become um, unable to help and support the dog because emotions stops us from moving forward, right? So what you want to do is, and I say, say this in, in very loving way, right? I love that you're helping this dog and I love that you're supporting this dog and I love dogs myself. But I want you to detach yourself from the dog. Let's say for an hour a day, you have your dog for 24 hours a day, at least for an hour, detach yourself from the dog emotionally, mentally, and physically, uh, and say, you know what, I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you, right? The rest 23 hours, I'm going to be the person that I am, the whoever you are, how, how, whatever energy you have. You're going to be that person. But for an hour a day, I want you to detach yourself so you can become a source of impact, a source of help, a source of support for your dog. So you can be mindful and be more uh, available to support your dog without attaching yourself with emotions and feelings and stories in your head. So for an hour, I want you to detach and train your dog like a soldier, right? The reason I say that, I want you to train your dog like a soldier because here's the, the message you see here, right? Share affection only as a reward if you have accomplished the daily five essential needs, right? There's on time. It came on time. I want you to, for an hour, share affection with, your, with this dog in a form of reward not because you love her love this dog or you um you fallen in love with the story or a oh, poor dog or this and that because your dog is doing exactly what you're telling it to do you're telling it to sit it sits you're telling it to stay it stays you're telling it to come it comes your task is to first of all improve its we call it obedience, but improve its communication system with you and your dog. You want to improve it to the point that your dog says, you know what, I can listen and do exactly what this human is asking me to do for an hour a day. The rest of the time, I will try my best, but for an hour, at least this human is trying to help me. I'll, I'll listen to it, right? And you focus on training it, for an hour. Now you're saying it's not interested in play, right? Let me see. You're saying that it's not interested in play, right? Um, where was it? Or toys. So when a dog is not interested in toys and games, what that means is it needs to, you need to start from beginning. You need to start from zero. So the first thing you have to understand is every dog is motivated by three things, play, praise, and food, okay? The last thing a dog needs is a food as a reward. The first thing is play. Natural Dogs are natural players. They are born natural players. And if your dog is not showing interest in play, that's because it, that it didn't have the opportunity to practice to play didn't have the opportunity to practice this natural um, ability, right? So next thing is praise. So I want you to praise it. So share affection, okay? Your praise is actually affection, all right? Share affection, bring that, use this method of rewarding your dog. So if your dog sits, for example, say, good boy, pet it, physically and share affection good boy good girl right so you share affection physically and emotionally and verbally to the point that your dog starts building that connection with you and starts learning that oh affection uh, is the the form of a form of reward for me and this is the way we're going to connect and once you connect with your dog <clears throat> your dog is going to start 
opening up its natural instincts and its natural abilities and it's going to be become slowly more playful and that is when you're going to start introducing games and toys but provide your dog's daily five essential needs focus on that right instead of also focusing on emotions and feelings that this dog has been risk abused and all that forget about those don't think about those you know that that was then that was past then this is now and in future right we're going to work on your dog today and this is now we want to make sure that your dog is uh, understanding that that was the past we're not going to remind your dog over and over that that's what happened previously we're going to start refreshing its mind and refreshing its brain with providing new input and we're going to start inputting information fresh information which is based on exercise training socialization care and then affection okay you're going to focus on these five things okay these five things are going to be your form of um, connecting with your dog so realize these and understand that your dog doesn't want to live like that. Doesn't want to live in, in a way that you're describing it. That's not the way a, a human or a, an animal wants to live. It, nobody wants to live like that. So if you want to help detach yourself from your dog for an hour or so, as much as you can sometimes during the day and be the energy that your dog needs am i making sense kp okay let me know and i'll talk about it a little bit more if you have any follow-up question go ahead and ask it in chat area i'll read and answer them but that would be my form of approaching an abused dog i will start the deleting those information from my mind from my head so i'm not focused on those so i don't transfer that energy to my dog i want to delete those in from my mind and my dog's mind right interesting subject and i i can talk a lot more about it but let's talk about it if you have any questions if anybody of you any of you have questions about this topic and you want to talk about it more let me know in the chat area we'll talk about a, little, a lot more um but there are some other questions that i need to answer uh summer is saying sorry i love in, in uh, i live in an apartment getting i love in apartment getting my puppy next friday how do i puppy train him overnight to we go outside every two hours in the middle of the night or do i let him use the peep uh, pepper at night <laughs> pee pad at night uh good question uh so one of the first thing that you want to know and understand is that if you get your puppy from decent proper decent and proper breeder already is going to come to you potty trained so you don't have to deal with it but most of the time it's not the case so you need to work on potty training so first for the first 48 hours yes every two hours you have to take it outside now at night when they're sleeping you may want to also do that you want to take it every two hours wake him up take it outside let it do its business if does does if it doesn't bring it back put it back in the crate at night that would be ideal now if you change your dog's diet you will see that this issue of potty training is going to be much easier it's going to be easier to deal with it's going to be easier to um, train the puppy <clears throat> and get the results that you want so what I'm going to do, I'm also going to share a video in the chat area. Potty training. It would be in the chat area. Please watch that video as well. And it will give you a little bit more information. But yes, you want to 
you want to take your puppy at least for the first two days or so, two, three days, every two hours outside, if possible. You don't want it, you know, pee pad should be only for emergency cases. If there's a storm out there, if there's something going on that you can't really step outside and do, take it outside, you use a pee pad. Other than that, you don't want your puppy to get used to doing its business on pee pad. Um, if you're living in an apartment, that's the challenge, going up and down the elevator or, you know, if you're on the first floor, going out of the building and letting your puppy doing its business outside. You want it to get used to doing it outside. You, puppies and dogs in general, they don't want to do their business in, in inside. All right, um, we have Saber Dog says hi, Sarah. Saber Dog is in the house. Thank you for being here. We had a little chat offline. Um, I'm enjoying your photos, and you happen to be a photographer, but you take beautiful photos, and you have a beautiful model dog, Saber, as well. So it's in, it's very interesting for me to uh, see your photos. I love photographing myself. Thank you for being here. KP uh, is asking, my dog is three to four years. Uh, okay, so we, we and as talked about that. Cruz Raj, hi G, we have nine months old Beagle. Is it continuously barking every night? How can we handle it? A nine months old Beagle is barking every night. The reason it's barking is again, you you are not providing enough mental physical stimulation for your puppy, for your beagle puppy. So it's not tired, it's not stimulated. What I usually do with my own puppy is throughout the day, <clears throat> I provide a lot of opportunities for my puppy to get stimulated mentally and physically and emotionally and um, just be, you know, um, stimulated because what happens if they are not stimulated and tired and relaxed they will do those behaviors so what I do with my puppy is throughout the day I let, it, let her play with other dogs I if I'm at home <clears throat> I let my puppy to hang out by the kitchen where I'm cooking for example or preparing my meal or whatever so not in the kitchen, but in the border of the kitchen. So my puppy is sitting and watching me doing, you know, my things right in the kitchen. Um, if I'm at working at my desk and I'm working, my puppy is usually by me and I'm asking her, you know, to relax or do something. Uh, I do a, a, a 15, 20 minutes um, fetch game. Uh, every night I try to train my puppy, at least for 20 minutes, half an hour, I train my puppy. Um, I take her for a good walk, you know, half an hour walk, at least twice a day. Um, I, I do a lot, you know, it takes a lot to, to tire up a puppy, especially because they are, you know, fresh, they're young, they're full of energy. They need a lot of stimulations, so they need they need you to provide that mental and physical stimulation so they can relax and uh, calm down. If you don't, what happens is they they get to the point that they're not tired, and at night they're barking at you, telling you that I need I need some form of I'm not tired. You know, I'm, I need stimulation. I need, uh, I need something. I need to do something. Where did I put it? Hold on. I'm trying to find. Okay, there it is. Um, so you need to focus on providing your dogs daily five essential needs. This is very important. You know, I do exercise my puppy. You know, mentally and physically, we play. I let my puppy to play. I do uh, at least 20 minutes, half an hour training every day. I try to do every day. Uh, if it's not every day, it's uh, at least every other day. She gets a lot of socialization. I take her to park and p places. Uh, I take her to uh, busy streets just to get her socialized with 
stimulations, you know, get stimulated, um, provide proper care and affection. So I do all these. And then at the end of the night, let's say 8.30, 9 o'clock, she goes straight to in her crate and says, bye-bye, I'll see you in the morning. Right? She's gone. She's gone for a sleep at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. She's, she puts herself to sleep, right? Because she's done. She's, she's satisfied. She's stimulated. She had enough. She needs to sleep now. And it's not that she doesn't sleep throughout the day. She sleeps for an hour, two hours after we, she wakes up. She, she, uh, she wakes up and she has her breakfast and she goes for a little walk. She goes back to sleep. Uh, and then at noon, she sleeps for a couple of hours. So if you focus on those, um, then you're going to see better results. The barking is going to stop, and also it's going to be happier and uh, more relaxed as well. All right, next question is from Teresa. Teresa, thank you for being here. Teresa is one of the students of mine, and she's doing very well. Apparently, she's enjoying the the course that she's taking and she's uh, learning a lot. And if you want to join my online courses as well, uh, do so by visiting my website, uh, sorrowdogtraining.com. And there they are, all the courses for you to go ahead and register today and become educated dog lover, just like Teresa. All right. Teresa is asking, when I speak with a butcher, what type of raw bones should I request? Beef, chick beef chicken, pork, etc. I have a beagle puppy. Yes, I know you have a beagle puppy. Um, and that, that's the one, I believe. Very cute. Um, I would suggest to go mostly with beef um, and pork, maybe, raw bones. <clears throat> Chicken bones are good too, as long as again raw. Uh, chicken bones are good to use as a meal, part of the meal. You know what I mean? So you want to add it to the meal and uh, feed your puppy. But if you want for entertainment or chewing and uh, also you know working on their gum and uh, teeth, uh, beef and pork would be the ideal. So. Uh, marrow bones are good, you know, knuckles, knuckle bones are good. Um, those are good options. Uh, where am I? Okay, there we go. And also, I uh, have a female beagle. What type of raw bones should I request from the butcher, for example? The, okay, so I, we just talked about it. Yes. So, yeah, so raw bones, make sure it's raw, uh, not cooked. Um, and try to go with beef and pork for um, entertainment, but for diet, I would feed chicken bones. Uh, Gershaw, uh, let me try this. Ger Gershaw, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing right. Hi, sorry, your wife directed me here. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, yes, we are... Uh, I know you had a call and you needed, uh, you had some questions. So go ahead and ask the questions and I'll answer them. Thank you for joining the live session. Uh, next question is from Kat. Hi, Saro. I wrote you before about my dog who will not sleep on his bed since I washed it. I did run it through the rinse cycle of the washing machine three times and he still won't sleep on it. <laughs> um, all right, so we have a, a problem with the bed. So what I would suggest is, in that case, could be the quality of the bed then. Or maybe your dog is not a bed dog. Uh, bed dog. What you want to get is probably either crate is good or get those beds that have... Um, uh, the, on the sides, they have this uh, padding as, as well, more of like a boat, <laughs> you know, they look like a boat. Let me see if I can show you a picture. Um, 
I'm not sure what type of bed you have for your dog, but I would go with something like this, or even better like this. Maybe these are the type of, you know, this is interesting. Some dogs, they like certain type of bed. Um, so like, you know, these are good because it gives them uh, that co co uh, cozy feeling, right? Um, this one, for example, it, this is just a little bit uncomfortable for dogs, I think. But this would be perfect bed. Maybe try different beds. Uh, what you can do, I don't know if you, in North America, at least that's what you can do. You can buy, try the bed or the product for, you know, at least a month or so and then return it if it doesn't work out or like. Oh, yeah, something like this too. Maybe something like this, you know. These are dome beds. The, maybe your dog likes this type of bed. So what I would suggest is just try different beds. Go to the pet store, buy a bed that will fit. The other thing that you can do is take your dog to the pet store that they have these beds, put, you put bring down the bed, put it on the floor, and see if your dog likes it, goes in it. Like this one looks really cozy, right? <laughs> so maybe try a different bed. It's just I don't I'm not sure what kind of bed you're using at the moment, but you know, try different beds and maybe that would be the solution. It, it's one of those things that you know, some dogs are picky, you know. Um, some I've noticed some dogs. We have a doggy daycare as well. I've noticed, you know, we have dog beds and couches and things. Some dogs then they don't like the beds or the couches. They rather sleep on the floor rather than on the in a bed. Could be that too. It's just that they feel more comfortable and more relaxed on just bare floor. You know, try that. Just bare floor. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Next question. Uh, Gershon, okay. I'm picking up a pup. The mother is a purebred child stray. Father is unknown. My goal is for the pup, this puppy to eventually be a trained therapy dog. I have first pick. Your words of wisdom in picking up, in picking a pup. All right. Now, we're talking about ther therapy dogs is you can't get a dog yourself and train it to become therapy dog. I'm not sure what kind of therapy is going to do. Like is one of those dogs that is going to help seniors or is it going to be helping, you know, mentally or is going to visit the hospitals and you know, um, help senior uh, or ill people? Is it going to be a therapy dog that is going to help kids? Is it going to be a therapy dog is going to help uh, people with PTSD? It depends, right? I don't know what exactly what type of therapy dog you're going to be using this dog for. But to be honest with you, therapy dogs are not are not made by <laughs> they're not made by uh, people they are born that's number one thing that you have to realize they are born what that means is you can't train a dog to become a therapy dog you can select it to be from whole bunch of dogs but just because you picked up this puppy or this dog from this breeder or store or rescued from the shelter doesn't mean that it will be a therapy dog. Therapy dogs are born as a therapy dog. They are bred to be therapy dogs, One, of, some, most of them. Second of all, if they are born, you can kind of figure out if it's going to be, when they are puppies, when they're young, you can kind of figure out if it's going to be a therapy dog. There are certain 
tests and t certain things that you can do that f you can figure out if it's going to be a therapy dog or not. Uh, same thing applies with, for example, if you want a herding dog, you have to see, or police dog, you, ha you have to see the, the, the passion, you have to see the drive in that puppy when they are young. If you see it, then you uh, uh, feed it and you grow it and you nurture, nurture it to become the, the therapy dog or the police dog or the um, herding dog, right? You see it from the young age and then you work on it. Now, we can't, you and me cannot figure these things out. There are certain companies, there are certain organizations that they do that. What they do is they uh, raise and breed therapy dogs. And they are professionals to figure out and, real, and uh, select uh, puppies that are ideal for certain tasks, right? So just because you get a puppy doesn't mean that it has the drive. It has to have the drive. What that means is it has to have the patience. It has to have calmness. It has to have the personality in order for that dog, puppy or that dog to become therapy dog. Now, if you want to do it properly, if you want to have a therapy dog yourself, you have to contact organizations and ask them to help you with having a therapy dog. But if you want, you want to do it yourself, unfortunately, it's going to be hard. It's not possible. It's not, it's kind of impossible, to be honest with you. The reason for that is because you're not focused on teaching this puppy to become a therapy dog. You're, you're focused on raising a puppy. That's it. You know what I mean? Therapy dog raising, therapy puppy dog raising is a different story. You know, uh, it's not that easy. It's, uh, it's, it takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of patience, 24 seven training that requires 24 seven training for a puppy to become a therapy dog, unfortunately. Um, so that that's my answer. I know it could be, it may be uh, a bit harsh, but that's the honest answer. I, 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 I hate to uh, be the non-fun <laughs> dog trainer, but that's the reality. Uh, and many people they have, they, they have asked me actually about this topic and they tell me, they ask me, oh, I want to have a ther therapy dog. You want, I want my dog eventually to become a therapy dog. Yeah, there are certain dogs that, you know, what you do is if you have a dog and you think it's ideal for a therapy dog, what you do, you take them to these organizations, they do the test. For example, I'll give you a quick example and a story. One of my clients had a black lab and she uh, wanted her dog. She was, the black lab was very gentle, soft, uh, good, well-behaved, almost 90% well-behaved. <laughs> there were some issues still that has to be, had to be addressed. The owner wanted this dog to become therapy dogs, reading books for kids at the library. There is a there is a program like such as you know what happens is there are kids who have a hard time reading and focusing and um, being they're anxious they can't focus so what they do is they gather these kids in the libraries or schools uh, and they start reading the book for the dog. So because the dog is bringing that positive energy to the dog, to the kids, the kids start connecting a little bit more to the dog. They start focusing on the, the energy that the dog is sharing with them. So they start focusing on reading the book for the dog. So in this case, what happens, the kids are now reading. They're practicing focus 
all that. And what happens, the dog is just lying down there, um, you know, putting its head on the leg or, you know, on the, the kid. And the, the kid is just reading um, uh, a book for the, you know, for the dog. Reading books for dogs by kids. Let me see if I can share a picture. That, that would be amazing if I can find one. So something like that, right? Look at that. So the dog, this dog is a therapy dog because he's wearing the bandana, right? So they did in the shelters too. They did this uh, program that, you know, the kids go and read books for dogs in the shelters. Sweet story. Um, so what it does, this, this, you have to have a dog who's not only not an aggressive, it's calm. It's like super calm dog. It's just one of those dogs. There's a beagle one. Well, it's one of those dogs that just, um, you know, just lies down and just does nothing for an hour or something. It's very hard. It's very hard to have a dog like that that does nothing for an hour. So moral of the story is that you want you want there is another one another example oh these are so cute look at this the kid is reading book for this dog oh my goodness uh doesn't melt your heart so anyways i, I can go on forever <laughs> but do you see how i'm getting this dog is anxious right this dog is anxious is at the in the pond in the in the shelter and this kid is reading a book for his dog and it helps this dog to calm down. It's the vice versa, actually, in this case, right? But in this case, in this case, is the other part. Probably this kid, right, has a problem of not being able to focus. And, uh, you know, this dog is helping this kid to focus and read a book and be involved uh, with, with the task, right? So again, it depends what you want to do with your dog. Um, possibilities are endless, but you have to have a good, well-behaved dog. Um, you can eventually, again, you can take it your take your dog to the this organization. They will do a test, a behavior test, uh, and check to see if it's suitable to be in that environment, and uh, and go you go from there. But if you want to do a therapy dog training yourself, I will suggest you it's not going to be possible. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. It takes a lifetime to train a dog to become a therapy dog. Unless you have a dog that naturally is very calm and sweet and mellow and low energy, which you can do certain things with that dog. Hope that answered your question. Divya. Uh, hello, I have a new beagle puppy and is waiting on his third shot. I social. Uh, okay, I think I read this. Mm, yes, I did. Let's go to next question. Somar, how do I potty train my new eight weeks old puppy in the middle of the night? So. In the middle of the night, unfortunately, first one, first night or second night, you have to get up every two hours, step it out. You know, that's the challenge. I, I suggest you to do it on the weekend, which you don't have to go to work on the next day. So you have the opportunity and ability to do it. And also, uh, if you change the diet from kibble <clears throat> to fresh food, either cooked diet or home cooked diet or raw diet, you will see that your dog is going to have an easier time to be potty trained. The reason people have a hard time potty training their puppies or their dog is because of, I would say 60 to 70% of the reason is the diet because they are fed kibble, dry food. When your dog is eating kibble or dry food, because it's dry, it forces them, first of all, to drink a lot of water. So therefore, they have a lot of pee in their system. So they have to pee constantly, which is hard to for them to control it. And second of all, 
uh, it's hard for you to keep taking them out to relieve themselves, right? So it forces them to drink a lot of water, which is uh, it's an endless, um, endless circle. You're never going to lose that war, <laughs> right? Uh, win that war. Uh, and also because kibble and dry food are full of fiber, full of um, carbs. Uh, so if they eat this much food, they're going to poop this much, even more. So if they eat this much, they poop that much. Think of it that way, right? So it goes in and comes out. So they're going to poop a lot. So you have to keep feeding them. So if they keep being fed, they're going to poop constantly. So to avoid all these, just simply change the diet from kibble or dry food to fresh food, home-cooked diet, fresh uh, um, raw diet. And actually, I... I posted a new video um, my channel as well. Please watch this video. Uh, I'll call it feeding, feeding fresh food. Again, the link is in the chat area. Please go ahead and watch that as well. And start feeding good, fresh, clean food, as soon as your puppy comes home, and you're going to see you're going to have an easier time uh, to potty train. That would be an ideal situation. Uh, yes, uh, Idan, I think it's Idan. Hello, Saro, how do I teach my beagle to fetch? Good question. Um, is your beagle a puppy or adult? It doesn't really matter, but it matters. What it matters is your puppy has to have a good, solid sit, stay, calm commands uh, nailed, right? Uh, has to be solid on those. Now, if you want to learn and teach your beagle how to play fetch, I have a video, and it's with my beagle. And I teach her and show you how to play fetch game. So I'm going to share that video. It's called Fetch Game. It's in the chat area now. There we go. It's, it's on now. Go ahead and watch that and learn how to play fetch. Yeah. Cat uh, says, I rescued an abused dog too. So this was very helpful. So thank you. You are very welcome. Is the rescue is this rescue abuse dog the one that has an issue with the bed is if it if that's the case if that's the same dog i have a feeling it it's not feeling comfortable with the bed and my hint is that this dog is not feeling comfortable with the bed therefore is behaving that way it's a psychological mental challenge uh, so I am starting him right away on a raw diet from eight weeks. Oh my goodness, that is wonderful. Since you start doing that, once you start doing that, <clears throat> you'll see potty, potty training is going to be a piece of cake. And I'm not saying, I'm not just saying this. Uh, I have, you know, I have an online uh, training course and I do a lot of training with clients. And number one problem, pop, potty, puppy, 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 puppy issue is potty training. And as soon as I tell them that to change the diet, you know, especially start up right away from kibble, move it to raw diet or fresh food, they, they tell me, like within a few days, they said, oh, it's it's gone. The pot, I don't have a problem with potty training. It's, it's not even a problem. My puppy, eight weeks old, nine weeks old, 10 weeks old, peeing and pooping on regular, normal condition. It's not even a problem. <laughs> the problem of potty training or house training a dog has started because of the diet. Food companies are selling people crap. And when you sell crap to people, dog lovers, dog owners, dog, dogs are going to develop potty training issues, health issues, 
all kinds of problems which are related to food. And they make money out of selling crap to dog owners. Great news, I actually. That I'm so glad that you're starting your puppy on a raw diet, on the right foot at eight weeks old. That is amazing. That is great. That is fantastic. Elizabeth Caruso is in the house. Thank you for being here, Elizabeth. Do you believe in giving dogs bully stick? And if so, how much do you think they impede their appetite for their food? Always look forward to your great shows. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, bully sticks are, let me bring that to, let me show what bully sticks are so people know what we are talking about. They call it bully sticks, I call it veal chews and chews in general. So basically these are, these are dehydrated animal parts and they're pretty good. These are for entertainment. But this is the thing. One of the things that you have to understand is that these kinds of things that or treats or uh, bully sticks or bones or anything that you're giving to your dog should be only 5 to 20% of daily intake. Okay? So you have to consider them as food as well, is uh, intake. They're taking food in, right? Um, so beside you're giving them food, right? You're, if you're giving this stuff, you have to consider, okay, so if I'm feeding, if my dog is, let's say, 40 pounds, and a 40-pound dog should be fed 400 grams of food per day, right? And when you're feeding your dog 400 grams of food per day, you have to consider, okay, how much does a bully stick weigh <laughs> and consider? So I would say that would be, you know, a, a, a stick like one of these would be maybe 10 grams. I don't know, something like that, right? It's not a big deal, but you have to, if you're giving them one or two or three a day, you have to reduce the food level, food amount as well. So consider when you're giving your dog treats or food or uh, treats or bones or uh, entertainment value consider them as food intake one thing the other thing that you have to consider as well is that um, when you uh, whenever your dog or even you humans whenever we eat what it does it it, it helps the uh, it ha helps to develop, um, we call it insulin spike. When you spike the insulin, what happens? We uh, start having uh, this system in our, uh, this activities happens in our system to digest and deal with this food. And if you do that all the time throughout the day, you're stressing the system, right? Which causes a lot of health issues to develop in the body. And the more often you give treats or bully sticks or bones, uh, that's what happens. The, the, do the dog's body doesn't get to have a rest, a break. So consider that too. So try to give as less often as you can. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, it's a good thing to give. I like giving these to dogs, to my dog, and my dog gets it all the time as well, because it's natural, there's nothing in it, you know, nothing um, chemical or anything, these are natural, and they're great entertainment. Uh, my puppy uh, tends to be a little bit fast, she swallows these in, in a minute or two, but my older beagle, Harvey, he works on them for a few minutes. <laughs> so it's a good entertainment for a few minutes. Great. Um, Kat is saying, excellent idea. I will take him to the store and let him choose a bed. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let him choose the bed. Yeah, it's a good idea. I, I, uh, you know, my 
dogs are not very sensitive and not very, um, they're not picky. So anything I get them, I get them good pets and I, whatever I offer, they're, they're okay. Um, Sarah, Sarah, I'm guessing it's Sarah. A high sorrow. <laughs> American bully, five months of age, is 20 kilogram. Is it okay or not? American bully. Hmm. I, you know, it's hard for me to say. Let me bring the picture. At five months old, is 20 k kilogram. 20 kilograms. I would say it's okay. Um, it should be okay um, for a month old. So what you want to do is ask the vet, take your dog to the vet and ask them to give you the ideal weight. Uh, so what I did with my beagle, my puppy, when I adopted her, uh, I took her to the vet for initial checkup. And she told me, okay, she's a little bit on the weight, so we need to pack a little bit weight on her because she was she, her. I could see her ribs; she was skinny. Uh, she's starting to put on weight. Uh, changed the, her food, obviously, and I'm giving her uh, carbs as well as well as uh, proteins, um, helping her to gain some weight. Um, so that would be the ideal. Uh, now. You could also ask other bully, American bully owners, uh, what they think is the ideal weight. If you have to happen to be on Facebook, join Facebook groups who are, who are on focused on American bully breeds, uh, go and join the groups and ask them. They would know better. Um, because puppies, it's hard to tell. You know, some sometimes they look lean sometimes they look fat and you don't know uh if it's it's if it's a good um weight or a, a size for that age because each dog is different you know the build is different so you have to consider all those uh gershon it, it is going to be attending ptsd groups um i'm a therapist so just pre present with a calming energy Yes. Okay. So if this puppy is going to uh, work for PTSD groups, um, yeah, you see, this type of do people, they need calmness. You know, in general, this type of people, unfortunately, in the, from the state of mind that they ha are, the, any dog will do anyways, you know, just connecting with a dog will do, but a, you can't have a person, a human who has, you know, certain, is in certain mental state and have another dog who is in different mental state and have them together. It, it will be challenging for both of them to help each other. But in general, what I've noticed, people who have PTSD, um, as long as they have a normal dog, it helps them a lot. It helps them to redirect their thoughts and energy to the dog rather than to the past. So remember earlier I was talking about rescuing an abused dog. Whenever a human is in situation like having PTSD, it's the memories of the past that is causing that person to react or overreact. When you put a dog with this person, this human doesn't have the time and the energy to focus on the past and remember. Starts. Uh, Build, uh, directing its energy on this dog, sharing affection and love and exercise training, socialization, 
on the dog. So it puts on that it puts the energy on making this dog's life better, not knowing that this dog is helping that person to become a different person and also change its thoughts um, and feelings and emotions and start forgetting, right? That's the, uh, that's the goal. You want to help a, a, a human who has PTSD to forget the past and build fresh new layers of information and memories in their brain, right? Same thing applies with abused dogs. You want them to forget the past, right? You want them to forget what happened in the past and start building new information, new layers in their mind and their body and soul in general, right? So overall, I would say any dog will do with these people because it's good to have a dog like in this case, you know, in this is my personal opinion, and I have researched it, and I have talked to certain uh, people um, that know this stuff. Uh, you see, if you have a person who have who has PTSD, and you introduce them a, a dog, let's say a, a dog who has high energy, right? It's actually better for this person to have a dog who has a high energy and is it's uh, it's bullet running around because this person now has to focus on helping this dog to calm down and relax and that that's a good f form of focus that's a positive for, for, form of focus for this person because it helps this person to forget and not think about the past and focus on helping this dog to calm down and be active and be um, exercise properly, have had, ha, has, uh, so as long as this puppy or dog has good exercise and training and all that, focused on that, it's actually better. In this case, I would say it's better for a person who has PTSD to have a, a dog that has a little bit of higher energy because it redirects and re uh, focuses the human to something else you know what i mean that's the that that's the thing a calm energy a therapy dog that is working at the school or a library or at the hospital yes they need to have a very calm energy but for people who are who have ptsd it's good to have a dog that has a little bit of behavior, a little bit of personality. Does it make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Great topic. Uh, Thomas, my dog just uh, Socrates, all the hair off behind his ears is always shaking his head. What should I do? I'm not understanding the question. My dog just Socrates all the hair off behind his ears is always shaking his head. What should I do? Ears is always shaking his head. I'm not sure the hair off behind, if it's raising his hair on the back, that is a doggy communication to other dogs that they're feeling threatened, they're feeling uncomfortable. So they do that. If your dog is shaking his head because of the ears, so you may want to clean the ears. Um, the best uh, the best solution for that uh, would be, let me get the information. It's called Xenotics. Uh, I can't find it. But just find uh, an ear cleaner that has zinc in it. That would be an ideal ear cleaner. Ear cleaner. If 
you use that, it will get rid of the, all the bacteria and uh, all the yeast in the air um, for a long time. Let me see if I can find it. I can't find it, but that would be my suggestion. And also, I'm not clear and sure about the question. If you could rephrase the question, that would be great. Uh, rubber plucky, <laughs> rubber plucky. Is there a way to unteach my beagle bad habits? Like going to the bathroom where they are not supposed to. She already goes where I guide her, but she does not give up continuing the bad habit if I don't. Um, so if your dog, beagle is doing that, which is peeing somewhere that is not supposed to, it's not that it's a bad, it's, it's become a habit. It's because it's communicating to you, it's telling you something is bothering you. When dogs, they feel stressed or anxious about certain things, what they do is they mark. That's how they communicate. That's how dogs talk. That's how they dogs say, you know, this is how I feel. Instead of, because they can't sit down and have a chat with you, what they do is they leave a mark to let you know that there's something is bothering them. Could be either the relationships in the house is um, dramatic. It's not healthy in the house. Maybe somebody moved out, maybe somebody moved in, maybe you moved the furniture, maybe you replaced uh, a furniture or appliance something, something happened, something has changed, and your beagle is telling you that this change is bothering it, and it's anxious, and that is the reason why it's marking. So find out what is causing the stress to happen to your beagle, and maybe change and improve. For example, if somebody has moved into your home, somebody new has moved into your home and you're, that's the reason, what I would do is I would put the leash on my beagle and throughout the day for the next week or so, I would keep it under control, on the leash, in a crate, under my supervision or somebody's supervision. So it doesn't have the opportunity and the time to go and do that behavior. That, that's how you relax the dog. But if it's something like, that's because you know a new person has moved in, so you're at, telling your beagle that relax, calm down. I'll take care of it, I'll help you. Now, if, you, if there's a, a, an argument between husband and wife and the beagle is marking, that is something that you have to address the relationship between the couple. So if you do that, then you will have an opportunity to relax that beagle and uh, get that beagle to become uh, a little bit more comfortable with the environment. The environment is probably causing this uh, beagle to behave that way. So think about bring, bringing calmness and relaxation to the environment. Apex Gaming is saying your first video likey. Very good, thank you. Um, Apex Gaming is asking also, my dog doesn't listen to me. Uh, there are many reasons uh, why a dog won't listen and your dog is a year old. Uh, I would say the reason that happens is because you don't spend enough time as you can see behind me, on, fo on focusing on providing exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. You're probably more focused on providing care and affection. Okay? You're not doing enough training. You're not 
you're probably providing either too much exercise or too little exercise. And you're not doing daily training, you're not providing enough socialization. So if you don't provide your dog's daily essential needs, your dog is not going to listen to you. Your dog is going to say, you know, you don't give me or you don't provide me what I need, which are all these and has to be provided in this order. You don't provide me these. Why do I have to listen to you? There's no point for me to listen to you, right? So try to um, focus on providing a dog's daily five essential needs then you're going to have a dog who's going to listen to you. Provide, wake up in the morning, take your dog for exercise, you know, half an hour walk, come back, do a 15 minute, 20 minute training session, you know, sit, stay, calm, heal, down, all those. Do a little bit of socialization with your dog, take it to different parts, different environments, let it socialize with different situations, different environments. Them, and then provide care and affection. If you do that, you're going to see that your dog is going to change. Okay. And I noticed that uh, you're saying scratches. Okay. Um, so your my dog just scratches all the hair off behind his ears. Is always shaking his head. What should I? Do? Okay. Now it makes sense. <laughs> your dog scratches the hair behind of his ears and always shaking his head. So your dog, if it's doing it all the time and it's shaking and um, scratching and all that, it's food related. It's reaction to the food. I'm guessing you're feeding your dog kibble or dry food. So what I would do, I would suggest you to feed uh, for next month, try to feed as much as possible fresh food. Um, fresh food, what I mean by that is either home cooked diet, you know, meat and vegetables or raw diet, again, meat and some raw vegetables, raw meat, raw vegetables, uh, feed your dog those and see if that problem is going to go away. Now, one thing that you have to be aware when you changing diet, you're going from kibble or dry food to fresh food is first week or first two weeks your dog is going to actually scratch more that the reason for that is because your uh, the toxins that has built up in your dog's system are going to come out right there are lots of toxin buildups when you feed your dog kibble or dry food and whenever you start feeding fresh food, this fresh food goes and does its work and starts cleaning up the system and pushes the toxins out. So in, therefore, your dog is going to scratch more. It's going to be scratching and shaking and having diarrheas or maybe even throwing up and things like that. That's a good sign. That means the toxins are coming out. So don't freak out don't panic uh, and just let it let the system clear up so that's why i'm suggesting to feed for a month maybe even two months fresh food and see if that's going to go away uh, if that goes away then continue on feeding on fresh food if it doesn't go away that means um, there are a lot more toxins in your dog and your dog needs to detoxify and that is a different story let me know the results in a month or two if you're going to change the diet if you're able to change the diet that's great and let me know in the results in in a month or two and we have a question from kp thank you if my dog spends most of his time upstairs in his safe space should I use the leash technique you've talked about to move around with me indoors? Yes. So when a dog is sensitive and it's just hanging out in some area, in some place, and is not 
motivated to move and interact with the human and wants to hide and all that. You have to get it out of that shell, right? Uh, so you have to, again, you know, focus on, this is, this is the secret, this is the so secret sauce, you know, providing your dogs five essential needs exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. So the exercise and training and socialization, you're going to need to have them on leash, right? And have it on leash and let it listen to you and pay attention to you and get cues from you using play and praise reward system that you can learn on my channel, how to encourage the dog to play with you or respond to your praise properly. Affection can be a reward for the dog, by the way. Focus on exercise, training, socialization, and use the leash to move the dog. The leash is not the enemy. Leash is your friend. Leash is the tool that connects you to your dog. At this moment, your dog needs you to help it to connect with you or somebody. I suggest that somebody to be you and use the leash. Don't think that leash is enemy. Don't use the leash the wrong way. Don't use it in aggressive way. Use it in proper way. And you're going to see that your dog is going to start responding to it and be more flexible and more willing to be with you and spending more time with you. Uh, Apex also, and also my dog does not bark in intruders, intruders, <laughs> uh, where was it, intruder, intruders, and his name is Simba. Okay, so is, if it's not barking at strangers, that's because it's just not in the drive, it's not, it doesn't have the drive. What I mean by that is, I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to become a filmmaker. I wanted to become a director. But my parents, they wanted me to be a doctor or mathematician, right? But I didn't have the drive to become a mathematician or a, um, or a doctor. My drive was to be a director, movie director, a filmmaker. At the moment, I'm kind of pra still practicing to be a filmmaker. I'm, by the way, I'm, I have worked on a film. I've made a short film, putting the finishing touches on it. Uh, I'll be releasing on a different channel some other time. That, that's a different story. Um, but uh, my passion was to be a filmmaker, director, not a mathematician or uh, a physician or a doctor, right? So they couldn't force me to become one, right? So your dog, you can't force it to become a guard dog, right? It's it's a it's it's a behavior that I, the dog either has it or it doesn't. If it does it, then you what you do you cherish it and you make it better and works for you and works for the dog. If it's not, you just don't force it, you, don't, you forget it. Don't punish the dog, don't feel bad about the dog, it's still your dog, right? So even though I didn't become a filmmaker or director, my parents didn't love me less, right? They still love me, right? So that's the idea. If you your dog is not a guard dog, doesn't mean that you have to love it less. Love it more because it's special. It doesn't fit in the regular category of dogs, right? KP saying thanks again. You are very welcome. Uh, Grushar says you are very informative and helpful. I understand now why Chris Austin referred me to you and why he thinks you are the best. I think he has a man crush on you. <laughs> that is super funny and uh, that's very uh, touching and very uh, i appreciate that i really appreciate that I, and means a lot actually um 
Thank you. That's that's great. I'm 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 appreciative and thankful, and I'm very uh, happy that it made sense to you. I was able to help help you and give you the information that you needed. Um, it's something that I think you know when you're passionate about anything, any topic, any subject, any any issue that you are passionate and you're you're very um, in tune with it it shows right so i think you know my energy shows it to everybody who i meet uh, including chris austin chris austin is our local uh trainer he, he's a fitness trainer he has a gym he's a great man and he has a great um uh, gym it's called body co fitness google it thank you for the feedback and i'm glad i was able to help Apex came in saying, thanks. You are very welcome, everybody. And that's the end of the questions. I believe I answered all your questions. Thank you very, mu very much for being here. And if still there's questions that I didn't get to answer, make sure to ask them in the comments area right after the live show is end. We're going to end the show at this moment. And if I didn't get to answer them or there are additional questions, ask them in the comments area. I read them all, I answer them all. And uh, please like the video, share this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live next time. And also check out my new video coming up on Sunday, the uh, Seven is I think is it seventh? Um, no, no, sorry, fourteenth. <laughs> um, I, I lost my thoughts for a minute. Minute, uh, the fourteenth Sunday, the fourteenth at nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hey guys, thank you very much for being here. If you really like what you're getting in this channel, please share this channel with every other dog owner, every other dog lover. Let's bring this channel to that level that everybody gets to know this channel. My passion is to help you to become an educated dog lover and become a, a dog owner that knows exactly how to raise a proper puppy and a dog and have a great, well-behaved behaved and healthy and happy dog. So if you really enjoy this show, this channel, please spread the, the word and share it with everybody. I want to thank you very much for being here today. I really enjoy these sessions. I really enjoy being, uh, co you know, helping the community and being uh, in touch with the community and talking about dogs. <clears throat> and I'll see you Sunday and I'll see you next week at the same time, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Till next time, have fun with your dog.